So you just, we just had this super interesting discussion about the global challenges for cotton. And you all touched on different parts of what the challenges are. So I would love to hear from each of you what think the most challenging thing is. Uh, climate change and linked to that water scarcity mm -hmm. uh, are already big challenges and they will only be bigger. Uh, uh, Natalie, what, are you, what about you? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, an increasing sort of balancing act between, uh, you know, a consumer and the industry demands um, versus sort of, uh, you know, what, what's actually feasible, how is the reality at the field level looking like, and, you know, how much can we put on the shoulders um, of our producers and the farmers. And that touches upon, you know, a lot of issues, including obviously climate change. I talked about that um, in terms of, you know, not just looking at mitigation, but also helping actually farmers to sort of deal with the impacts of climate change that affect them the most. But it goes beyond that. It goes beyond, you know, it goes into all sort of sustainability requirements, um, into traceability requirements, into, uh, you know, anything that is happening at the legislation and, 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 and global sort of pressure level. And what about you, Jesse? Yeah, I mean, I echo all of what was said, but also uh, the price of polyester as compared to cotton is certainly a big challenge and will continue to be, you know, maybe half as much sometimes. And then particularly that layered along with the legislation that um, creates sort of an environmental score that may not be complete, may not have a full picture of biodegradability or the environmental impacts of plastic pollution in our food and our waterways and even in our bodies. So I think that science is evolving and I hope that it will be implemented and it will be considered amongst the context of when you make a choice and particularly as it pertains to sustainability is it cotton or polyester. Yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Because we've got the growth of synthetics happening and they've got this you know, kind of inherent advantage with the measurement systems and they're kind of causing the climate to become more increasingly unstable or just increasingly unstable, uh, and that is then putting the supply of cotton at mm. risk. Mm. And so I, I have spoken to a climate scientist who was like, with cotton, because what it requires is heat, in some version of events, there is a, world, a warming world, maybe means good things, not necessarily for the regions cotton is grown now, but certainly for other regions. And so he basically was like, well, if you move you could move if you're moving the agricultural landscape around that's kind of how we would can overcome this what would you say to him um that is not as simple as that so i i don't disagree with the fact that i mean during the course of human history we have uh, found new places to grow uh, particular crops and of course th th so this is partly true but around um the regions where cotton is currently grown, there's a whole ecosystem, you know, that you don't just simply also move along. Um, and it's not just heat, it's so many other conditions that, that play a role in whether uh, the land um, and region is suitable for, for cotton. So, yeah, I, I don't disagree, I just don't think it's the whole picture. And I think you have to consider as well uh, just, just to adding to that, the, the social impact, because even if you could grow cotton, do people want to grow cotton in those places? Have someone asked those people whether they want to grow cotton? Um, you know, I think we tend to sort of make decisions for producers um, without actually getting them into, uh, you know, the conversation. Um, and also in the places where we are growing cotton currently, right, there is, um, you know, the elevated risks of heat stress um, of, of the workers at field um, and the farmers as well. So, you know, just replacing and having them doing like another crop doesn't necessarily solve all of the issues. You have to consider the social elements as well. Yeah, and I thought it was really interesting. You know, it's kind of powerful. Like we talk about all of these ways to mitigate harm on the landscape and, you know, the um, move towards regenerative agriculture and how, you know, that it's not just, it's got so many benefits because as the climate becomes increasingly unstable, obviously it helps the farmers have more resilient landscapes. Would you be able to talk a little bit more about that? Uh, I mean, that's certainly what you said is spot on. And also, I'll take sort of the contrary view too, is that cotton is a drought tolerant crop and can be grown where pretty much nothing else can be. So I think there will be opportunity where cotton will find some new places to go. Um, but we're 
you know, where we have to keep growing because there really are no other options to maintain a social and, and environmental structure in those regions. Uh, soil health and regenerative agriculture can play a key role in uh, making it more climate resilient. Through improving soil health, you can uh, make the water store, sorry, make the soil store more water and make that water go further, as well as enabling reduction sometimes in uh, nutrient uh, application. So there's a lot of benefits, uh, particularly around um, climate resilience associated with regenerative agriculture. Yeah, and I think that kind of brings us neatly to what I think is a really interesting topic at the moment with the, you know, impending legislation coming in in the EU, which is, you know, do we have the tools in place that can accurately measure the positive benefits of this kind of agriculture versus the negative benefits of, say, a fiber that comes from mining? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll start off and uh, life cycle assessment, which is the primary tool in most of these legislations, is you know, a piece of the information. It's like looking through a keyhole. You can see what you can see, and that might be true, but the rest of the context is not always there. So I think we have to really work on that context. I think the cotton industry and the natural fibers as a whole need to work together to provide that context to the decision makers at the legislative level. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a topic uh, where you see why we also need to collaborate, right, as different cotton mm -hmm. systems. Um, so we, we have our differences, our healthy differences, but we all stand for um, a sustainable cotton sector. Um, natural fibers are a key component of a sustainable textiles industry, and uh, that's something we all agree on. Um, we need to advocate for that very strongly uh, and jointly. Um, and w there's a lot we can do with our combined power uh, doing so. So we all possess different type of data uh, to prove that point. Um, we have, uh, and we can amplify that voice by well, we bring that as one front. Well, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>